Of all the characters in Blaze Blue, and of all their actual finishes, Makoto was not the one that I would have put as the strongest. Honestly, before I researched this, I would have gone with a meteor that is about a fourth the size of the moon, slamming into the earth causing a global catastrophe of such magnitude that it would kill all life on earth. But no, Makoto's astral finish where she breaks the moon is definitely far more destructive. Of course, I'm not talking about destruction as in to the other character's health bar, I mean there are insta-kill moves in this game, but destruction as in the actual amount of real world energy a feat like this would require. So, select your main fighter and hope that they are strong enough to withstand the might of the knowledge that I will be slapping them with as we calculate the power of Makoto's punch. Hello internet, Jojo here, and welcome to Idea Shock. Guys, has anyone else noticed that it's always the moon that feels the author's wrath when they want to make sure that we know a character is strong? Seriously, Naruto, the moon got cut in half. Dragon Ball, the moon gets destroyed several times. One Punch Man, the cover page has not punching a hole in the moon. I am just waiting for this to happen in One Piece. Of course, this is not only restricted to anime and manga, the West does it too. Is Superman angry? Have him split a moon. Does He-Man need to work out? Bench press the moon. I mean, after all this abuse, I kinda get why the moon from Zelda wants to belly flop on the earth. It's called revenge. Anyways, let's get to the specific moon destruction that you're here to learn about. Makoto is smashing it with her astral finish. Now, as always, the best place to start is at the beginning. And in this case, that is calculating the force required to shatter the moon in the first place. Of course, we will get to the part where the moon fragments were ejected into space at relativistic speeds, but we must follow the order of operations. Now, as we can see, the moon broke very cleanly. What I mean by that is that the area that was broken are completely flat. So, by taking the length of all the major broken segments and comparing them to the diameter of the real moon, 3,474 kilometers, we find the total broken surface area is about 21.4 million square kilometers. That is about 2.2 times more area than if she just split the moon in half. Yeah, that's right. Feel scared, Naruto. The ultimate sheer strength of moon rock, as we've discussed, is about 123 megapascals. Taking this area and using this as its strength, we find that Makoto had to have hit it with about 295.871 quadrillion US tons of force. Now, as you might assume, that's a lot. But considering that this force displaces all the way through the moon, we find that for Makoto to crack this moon like this, she must have struck with about 2.185 exatons of TNT. Now, this isn't even close to the moon's gravitational binding energy, but remember, this is just the energy to crack it. A character can crack a planet in a half and still not have the power to be what most people call planetary level. This is because the real power comes from whether a planet moves or shifts from that hit. When a character overpowers the gravitational binding energy of the moon, it will move. Like when Naruto took this hit. As you can see, this hit was powerful enough to make the two halves move, meaning this hit not only split the moon, but also overpowered the binding energy of the moon. So with this knowledge and looking back at Makoto, I think it's safe to say that this hit overpowered the gravitational binding energy, but of course, let me know in the comments if you don't think so. That was sarcasm. So overlaying these images, and we find that during the initial explosion, these segments covered about 1,396 kilometers in 0.07 of a second. This would give the moon pieces a speed of about 44 million miles per hour and an acceleration rate of about 1.9949 billion meters per second squared. That speed is about 6% the speed of light and the acceleration is about 6.65 times the speed of light per second. I think that that might lead to this punch being a bit more devastating than just overpowering the binding energy of the moon. Because the entire mass of the moon is being moved at this speed, we can apply its full weight to this acceleration. Doing that, we find that this would have had a force of 16.4764 octillion US tons of force. That would be the equivalent 
of something 7.5 times the weight of the sun being dropped on you at normal gravity. This is obscenely powerful. If we then displace this force by the distance the pieces moved, 1096 kilometers, and Makoto must have struck with about 49,000 Yoda tons of TNT. That is about 1 million times the energy to destroy the Earth. This is not only absurdly powerful, but is leagues above the next strongest feat that I calculated. Kokono is something a meteor. Comparing the meteor to the size of the Earth, and it comes in with a width of 758 kilometers and a length of 1079 kilometers. Treating it like an ellipsoid, and this giant meteor must have a volume of 325 million cubic kilometers. Considering that the density of most meteors is around 7.5 grams per cubic centimeter, this rock must have a weight of about 2.4375 quintillion grams, or about 6,000 times the weight of Mount Everest. Now, on average, a meteor will enter the atmosphere moving as low as 25,000 miles per hour and as high as 160,000 miles per hour. However, considering that this is a manufactured meteor, Kokono was probably going for the faster speed. So, this rock that weighs 6,000 Mount Everest hitting the Earth at Mach 208 would yield an energy of 1,490 exatons of TNT or 1.49 zetatons of TNT. This is only about 3 millionths of 1% of what Makoto struck with. So, as you can see, there is a significant power gap between Makoto, who is the most powerful, and Kokono, who is the second most powerful. Guys, this is just what happens when you have a character shatter the moon and send the pieces moving at about 6% the speed of light. So, to sum this entire video up in one sentence, small punch makes big boom, earth go bye bye. That's about it. If you enjoyed this video, then you know what to do. Literally everyone on YouTube says it. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with your family, friends, any hostages you have in your basement. You know, maybe scratch that last one. They're probably going through enough right now. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember to stay spectacular. Jojo, out.